Hi folks, welcome to the Cannabis Corner. I'm your host, Kerry Burns. Of course, we had the four states, Oregon, Arizona, South Dakota, and of course, Prop 19 from California on the ballot last Tuesday. And unfortunately, none of them happened to pass, but uh, Arizona was a very close race. In fact, the last numbers I checked, uh, they were within about a half a percent of each other, still too close to call, and they still had about 30% of the ballot box, uh, voting places left to, to count and all to, to add to that, so there is a chance maybe Arizona did. South Dakota was defeated brutally, almost two to one. I guess the people in South Dakota are gonna be kinda like the people in California that voted for the demise of Prop 19. They're probably trying to get honorary membership in one of the drug cartels in Mexico. But uh, it was a disappointment to see Prop 19, even though it was very weak, uh, the proposition itself, what they were offering for legalization was really f pretty weak, but you know, it was a step in the right direction, but unfortunately it was voted down. And, and it was only a difference of about 500,000 votes out of 7 million people that voted. So the difference came within less than 10% of the total, total amount that voted. And I think that uh, if, if you have something pass and it doesn't at least get 10 or 15% of the overall vote, then, uh, or by 10 or 15% margin greater than the loser, then probably both sides should win because that's really about, about a, as close as a tie can get. But of course, all the people who were voting no and trying to beat down Prop 19, they're, they're celebrating today, I'm sure, victory and all that. Of course, the top three supporters for that, that didn't want Prop 19 was the booze industry, the uh, law enforcement agencies and the prescription drug industries. And of course, those three stood the, the most to lose if Prop 19 had to come through. Uh, the law enforcement, of course, they would have lost out on the fact there wouldn't have been as many arrests for them to prosecute. Uh, the boozers, of course, they would have less people drinking booze because it'd be drinking something safer and less harmful, and that would be smoking cannabis instead of drinking alcohol, which kills collectively with cigarettes over half a million people a year. And of course, throwing the prescription drug deaths a year in this country, that's over 150,000 a year. So it, it pretty much uh, says that the people in California were f are for the drugs they've already got illegal. I mean, already got legal, and that's uh, alcohol, bu uh, prescription drugs, and of course, those are, are not under any kind of control, no type of scheduling or anything. And so, uh, unfortunately, they've missed a good chance to get uh, cannabis going in the right direction. Uh, my personal views about this, uh, even though Prop 19 was weak, I still think it was a step in the right direction. And I want to thank the 3.3 million people in California that did vote for it, uh, although we were edged out by 3.8 million voting no. But I've got uh, this episode I want to really kind of delegate to these, to these people who voted no. And uh, when you voted no for Prop 19 and any type of prohibition in this country, but particularly when you're voting prohibition for cannabis, what you're doing is you're, you might as well go and sign up membership with one of the drug cartels because you're allowing these people to continue operating illegally. And that's and all of the dead bodies they've been finding all along the, the mass graveyards they found there, Acapulco and some of the other places and all, you, you have a hand in that. And don't kid yourself if you think you didn't because when you, any time in this country that we've tried to make some sort of substance illegal, what's happened is the rise of gangs, we saw it in the prohibition days with Al Capones and the different mafias and stuff that generated because of the alcohol being illegal. And the dr drug cartels are no different today, it's just a different substance. Unfortunately though, this substance doesn't kill people like alcohol does. So I, I don't, uh, I, I feel sorry for the short-minded people in California that voted no. Most of what you were basing your vote on, I'm sure, if you weren't hooked into the booze industry or the prescription drug industry, I'm quite sure that you just aren't uh, smart enough to realize or, or you're just ignorant to the facts of what's, what in actuality, of what's going on. Cannabis is a safe herb. It's been used by countless cultures for thousands of years, not only medicinally, but socially. It has, the plant itself generates so many products that are could be just a booming industry in this country right now if we would just get off our tails and get it going. None of this was brought forth in Prop 19. They All they talked about was the tax revenues that they were gonna generate from having this 
Prop 19 go through and now they're going to tax the marijuana and all that. But they're basing all of their numbers on an illegal market. And when you look at the right uh, figures for a market that's not illegal, you're not going to have those type of tax dollars. You're not going to be able to tax $50 on an ounce of cannabis that's going to be selling for 5 or $10. So it was pretty short-sighted. And the people who wrote it, I'm sure they had good intentions and all, but they, they focused really too much on the recreational marijuana use. And they totally just were benign to mentioning anything about the hemp industry. And this is where the true money is to be made, is in the hemp industry. The products alone that this is going to generate, the amount of sales tax it will generate, will make the marijuana sales be so paled in comparison. It would be like a penny compared to a $100 bill. I mean, it's, it's going to be that different. And this is what I don't understand. Why people in business in California, y'all, y'all know how to work business numbers and stuff, and and you know what's taxable out there. Can't you imagine if you had a trillion dollar hemp industry in this country, the type of tax revenues that this would be generating? Not to mention the jobs. You know, we're hurting right now in this country. We have no industry that that everybody can be put back to work in, except for this industry. It's a, it's a green industry, it's a clean industry. It'd be one that could immediately put people to work. And when you voted no, you voted all that down. You voted for depressed, more depressed times in your state. You voted for short budget shortfalls and stuff like that. that. That's what you did with your vote no. And oh yeah, you kept the marijuana from getting to your children. Well, guess what folks? Marijuana is as prevalent out there as it's ever been. They were talking all of this stuff back in the 70s, 40 years ago. Nothing's changed, and except for the supply of the marijuana. It's just as prevalent as ever. And no law enforcement whatsoever is gonna stop children from being able to acquire marijuana. Be good parents. Teach them how to be good children. That's what you've got to do. If you're teaching them to be good children, all you don't have to worry about them getting high on marijuana. It's harmless to them. It's not going to hurt them like alcohol and cigarettes, the things that y'all chose to keep legal. That's where we need to be going after. We need a proposition that gets rid of these dangerous drugs, the, the true dangerous drugs out there. And that's the alcohol, the cigarettes, and the prescription drugs. We don't need to be chasing a plant that all the way around across the board is going to offer benefit, not only from a textile standpoint, but from a medicinal standpoint, from a job standpoint, from a revenue standpoint. All the way around, this plant is plus plus. So all of you that voted no, you go when you go to bed tonight, remember, you might as well have joined the cartels because you've given them now more, more power, more impunity. You're going to allow them to continue to supply this illegal market. You're going to make it tough for the growers, the local growers there in California. Make it tough for the dispensaries because the Drug Enforcement Agency is not going away until we get rid of this stuff. And until you take cannabis off the Controlled Substance Act, the DEA is is going to be pursuing it just like they always have their standpoint on this is cannabis is a dangerous drug and we need to go after it although they can't produce any statistics as to why they say it's dangerous hasn't killed anybody hasn't sent anybody to the hospital so all of this talk about how dangerous it is and how worried we are about our children getting a hold of it and all where's your statistics to back that up i mean anybody can make up lies like they've been doing the last 40 years doesn't make them true and in, and and what it does it befuddles the situation of of what people who who actually could have probably if they'd have been presented the facts if they'd have been told hey you know if you're voting over this thing you might as well be just supporting the cartel or guess what if if you if you plant if you you vote no, guess what you're going to do? You're going to kill the hemp industry. They could bring us all out of these economic doldrums that the whole country's suffering right now. So I applaud you people who voted yes, and, and in the other states too. Oregon, I understand why the growers and, the, and this particular measure didn't pass. I'm sure there was a scare tactic going that made a lot of the growers feel uneasy about it, and also a lot of the people who wanted to produce their own cannabis for their own medicinal, social, or whatever reason. We don't have these problems if we, if we make cannabis legal in this country. We make cannabis legal, we don't have to worry about doctor's prescription, which is ridiculous in the first place. We don't have to worry about drug cartels and gangs and people and violence and stuff. We, we, not, all that will go away. And one thing we can rest assured is no, is that many, many, many thousands of jobs and many billions and billions of dollars of tax revenue and revenue for people working will be generated. So. I applaud you people who did vote for these move measures. The marijuana movement appreciates you, and I know you feel like you've you got your tail licked, 
whipped yesterday, but guess what? We did make a stand, although it didn't come out in our favor, but one thing about it is we made uh, almost half of the people that voted voted in favor of this, and that, that was no landslide victory for the other side. And if they want to continue supporting the cartel, if they want to continue pushing alcohol, they want to continue pushing cigarettes, they want to continue pushing prescription drugs, let them have it, because guess what? They're going to their graves way earlier than we are. Cannabis users aren't criminals. We've, we, we, we use the smarter of the substances because it is safe. And I, I thank you for your vote, and I thank you for watching the Cannabis Corner, and tune in with us next time, because we're not giving up this fight, folks. Until the bitter end, we're going to get cannabis legal in this country. Thank you.